Burke for hosting this wonderful event, and of course, the speakers who have been so generous and will continue to be generous with their time and expertise, sharing their thoughts with us today. Uh, thinking about this program, it occurred to me that it was almost exactly 30 years ago today that a young astronomer at Lawrence Berkeley Labs named Cliff Stoll, who happened also to be the sysadmin for the Lawrence Berkeley Lab network, noticed a discrepancy in the telephone bill for the network's modems. It was a few cents. And that launched him on what's pretty widely acknowledged to be the first hacker investigation that ever occurred uh, in the United States that matter, maybe anywhere. One of the fascinating things about it, if you read his book, is the difficulty he had getting anyone in local or federal law enforcement to pay any attention at all to this problem. Uh, after investigating it, uh, which one, and his investigation went on for about a year, uh, they finally did trace the hacker and figured out what had been going on. What had been going on is the hacker had been dialing more or less randomly until he managed to dial up a, another computer modem. And then through that computer modem, he tried to find a machine that was not secure. That is in which, in those cases, in which the person who was sysadmin had not changed the default username and password, which at the time were respectively username and password. <laughs> and because of that, he was able to get into a machine on the system, and through that machine, get into all the other machines on the system. This was turned out not to be just idle curiosity on his part, because Lawrence Berkeley Lab, in addition to doing some very interesting astronomy work, was also then, and still is, the center at which the United States Research and Fusion was focused. And it turned out that the hacker was a KGB recruit named Marcus Hess. So how far we've come since then or not. The interesting issue these days is that not only is hacking not unusual, but it's almost become routine. We see hacker attacks not just on massive retail chains whom you would think are sophisticated enough to know better. We see them on massive internet behemoths like Yahoo. It's been around pretty much as long as the internet has been around. To is, turns out to be vulnerable to massive acts. We see hacks against the NSA, which is the agency in charge of hacking, among other things, and also turns out to be just as vulnerable as Kmart and Target and Walmart. And now we're moving into a new era of connectedness. We're moving into an era when we see hacking into car systems, car control and guidance systems, into medical systems, into smart TVs, to home automation devices, from smart TVs to smart light bulbs and printers. And of course, the issue in these hacks is not just that hacking into those systems allows control of them. So for instance, control of car systems and medical devices. But more than that, it allows hacking through the embedded devices into the larger network. Internet of Things brings us to another level of connectedness where uh, facilities of the, uh, that are critical to our infrastructure, which in prior generations could only be attacked by a direct physical attack on each individual facility, will now all be online directly, and it will be online through the world of connected devices and embedded devices, that is the Internet of Things. So I'm going to turn the program over now to Peter. Just a word about Lowenstein Sandler. We're a national firm. I think every firm says that, no matter where they're located. Um, we have offices in New York, New Jersey, and Palo Alto, and here in Washington, D.C. And our core strengths include insurance recovery work, which is the field that uh, Andrew is in and will speak about today, as well as our tech group and our litigation group. Those are among our strengths. And, and we think that among those strengths, it positions our firm ideally to be able to guide our clients through this next generation and the risks in this next generation of connectedness. Thank you. Thank you.